Now I'm going to be tying a large stone fly. Now this is the style I'm going to be tying it. Now this is a I've been messing about. I get asked all the time to tie these type of flies, and to be honest with you, I'd rarely tie large stone flies, especially a dry fly. Now this here was one of well, a third go. Uh, I have other versions I've been messing around with a lighter colour. Uh, Obviously, and I've got a brown, and what I'm going to tie now, uh, I'm going to be tying a, what we call the gadger. Now, the gadger is basically one of the only stone flies I've actually seen hatching in numbers, and where the fish were really interested, and it was in the River Clyde. Now, this one's tied, obviously, you can see orange and brown. This is more like a what they call the salmon fly, which is a large stone fly. Now. The first thing I'm going to be doing, I'm going to tie in that same style, happy with that style. I'm going to start knotting legs. Now the colour I'm using for the legs, this is a melanistic pheasant, which is a basically a black pheasant. You can see it's black and light grey near enough. This would be ideal for the wing, uh, for the legs, sorry. Now, as you've probably seen me before, I use a crochet needle. And what I'm doing here is two strands of the pheasant tail. Now when you're tying these knots you really got to be patient, you just got to take your time. Now I'm putting the knot around about a centimetre from the tips of the the pheasant tail fibre. You've, you'll find a tuition, I've got a small video in which I, you'll see me actually doing this. It's quite simple really, but once you get, to go, once you get going, uh, it's like, it can be frustrating sometimes, you do miss one like this, so you just got to go back. And then you bring it through. And there's your knot, and then what I'm doing here's a right and a left side on this, on this piece. Uh, because when we're taking, when we take them, as I make the fly, I'll be taking one from either side, so I get a nice match. And basically, we keep going until we're finished. Which in this case it doesn't take too long when you're using a, a crochet needle. Now the next thing I'm going to be doing is forming the eyes and uh, like on the stone fly, this one here I used an orange nylon and this and on the gadget I'm going to be using this fluorescent yellow and this is a 12 pound nylon it's quite simple, just get a length, obviously it's coming from the spool at the moment bring it down to maybe 2mm, the distance I use a pointed pair of tweezers and I trim it equally either side and the simply just all we do to form the eyes is melt melt it in and our eyes are formed ready to tie in and the distance yeah a second you can blow it I check the distance if it's maybe too far in this case I think it's just a tiny bit too far so come back in do the same again. So you're happy. We blow to cool it down. That's your eyes ready to, to go. Now for the wings I'm going to be using this is a grizzle uh, Indian cock neck which I've dyed grey. As you can see it's got a nice mark. There's a wee touch of brown there but not much. And I need two of these feathers for the wing. So we'll have them ready, just take them out, both the same size. As well, I take two for the, the feelers for over the front and two for the tail. So I'm just using the larger feathers at the top. All in I need six fibres, so take them off. Now for the tail, what we do is basically quite simple, is to strip the fibres away, just down either side, hold the tips of the feathers and then tear away the fibres. And then we can trip away, to cut these tips off. 
that's going to be for our tail fibers and then we've got the other two, we do exactly the same and these are going to be for the, the antenna or feelers, how you want to call them just remove them again and then we trim this is all the, the sort of prep work that you want to put in before you, you tie your flies and that's going to go over the front now the next thing to prepare is obviously the foam for the body now I'm using a 2 mil thick it's just a grey foam uh, best to cut it with a long pair of scissors now you're looking round about 4 5 mil or so thickness now that length here I'll get 2 flies so I'm going to half it and then basically what I'm going to do is fold this just to get an idea of the, the length I'm going to need because this will go into a needle now I wanted to taper slightly at the back so I'm going to cut the well it's not so much the corners but just come in at a slight point so that we'll get got it started there and then we can tie in this will be forming my body now I'm going to form the body of the fly now as you can see, obviously it's a detached body, but I've got the two sort of tail fibres at the back. Now to tie these on, obviously you see me, I prepared the feathers, I removed the fine fibres from the, the hackles. Now first thing I'm going to do, I'm going to use a black thread, you can use a grey thread if you want, but I want to use black, so I'm going to start on the needle, this is just a fine needle. In about three turns just to get it started. Now you can see the distance away from the point, at least a couple of mil. And then just put this through the centre. It's important that you put it through the centre. Put your time to that point there. And the first thing we're going to do is fold it. Go round with the thread, straight turns, four times anyway. Now Put the feelers on, just make it come to the side. The thickness of the feeler you can depend, right there, that's where I want it. So I'll catch this one on this side, do three turns, bring it towards you because I'm winding away because that stops it unwinding. Do the same on this side. Come around, you'll see it will sit naturally anyway three turns in there and then what we're going to do is bring the foam from back keep these the ends of the hackles there and then bring the thread up it's a bit fiddly at first but once you get into it it's fine once you've tied a two or three there's a distance for the second segment of the body two three four five or so turns Always tying in these these hackle fibers at the same time. You don't want them pulling out. Then work your way up to the next segment. Five turns or so. Now the thread I'm using is a uni thread. It's just the 8O thread, which is strong enough. There we go. And then up for my last segment. We keep this one not too long. And uh, nice and tight. A bit extra. I'm going to quick finish with fingers. So I just basically bring thread coming from the, the body straight down. I bring the bobbin up and I wind the thread coming from the, the body over the, the one coming from the, the bobbin itself. And there it's there. I just keep it on that side. You're looking uh, 45 turns. Let it slide up. Tighten. Now I'll keep these both the same length and really that's your body. You just have to slip it off. Keep it all nice and tight. See everything's still there. The threads, both the waist end, the tying thread and the hackle so they're well tied on. Looking at the length of the tail, it's not too long. So just hold them both at the same same length, trim. Just want to make it short. And there we go. Try and get them both the same length, I mean, it's just a little longer. That's better. There we are. And then we tie in this area where we just tied off. 
ready for the next part of the body. Now, getting to the point where we start to put everything together, uh, basically the hook I'm tying on, the choice is up to yourself, but this is the one I like using on detached body flies. Now, this style of fly really uh, it comes from like I do small sedge hog patterns and uh, sort of hopper type detached body. Now, this is just a bigger version of that, so. And I know it works, so obviously tying it bigger is not going to make it's going to, no, it's going to keep catching. So hopefully this will you'll get some idea. But the the gadger is, as I said, but the only stone fly that I've actually seen coming off in enough numbers that the fish really show a lot of interest in. And it was on the River Clyde, and uh, it's a big big fly. So anyway, you can give this a go. You can mess about with the colours. As I say, this uh, the orangey one I tied just to get an idea of some of the style that I'm going to tie it in. So, thread, I'm, you can either use grey or I'm just going to use black. Uh, it's just a uni -o, a uni, a uni, -o, a uni thread in AO. So, what I do is come, basically start at the eye, put a layer of thread down, then come back up about, say, a mil or so from the, the head. Now we strip four hackles earlier of the fibres, and two is for the tail, Two for the antenna, so I'm going to tie these on at this point, which I feel it's easier to do that. Get them to set right first, uh, line them up. There's a natural curve in them, and uh, they will, if you be patient enough, like for some reason these don't want to sit. You do get that sometimes, these fibres don't want to sit, so you've just got to bully them into the point where you want to tie them on. So there we are. They will separate. You can force them to separate as well. So there will be quite a look. There we are. That's fine. So we trim away the waist. But as well I'm going to tie in the eyes. Now you've seen the, the eyes I prepared earlier. Do wee small eyes. They're just wee highlights. Now I'm just going to figure eight them on. So push them up to the antenna, but see, I'm not exactly at them, but close. Just doing a figure eight holding them to leave room for the, the materials. I'm going to put some dubbing in here so once we get nearer the finish of the fly, figure eight it on nice and tight. So see, it's just a highlight, it's like. They're always like cat's eyes, if the light hits them, they reflect back light, so this is going to do that. So there we are. So now what we do is carry on down, I'm going to tie in more body. Now normally when I'm tying like this detached body versions, I would use the short shank hook and stop just by the point of the hook, but because this fly's so big, I'm going to use the whole shank, take it down to the barb. Then we've got our our body ready to tie in. Now I'm going to trim basically the foam and everything. Just I'm going to make sure to tie in that area. We'll be tied off. I'm going to do it nice and tight. Now I'm going to taper some of the materials I'm tying, especially the foam it's in the top. So it tapers in or tapers down. Then we quickly put some thread turns in there, making sure it's not going to move. See how it's positioned before you go any further, because you can always go back at this point. Now what I'm going to do now is get some some super glue, not so much on the top, underneath. Just give me a bit of grip, and then nice and tight tie down, tight as you can. You don't want the, the body coming off, you don't want it moving, so come underneath. Now, I'm going to put a wee tiny bit of dubbing, just a wee drop. Now, what this is, this is grey fox squirrel, the kind of base of the, so there you get a red fox squirrel, and this is the grey stuff. And I put a tiny bit of UV through it, just a bit of UV flash, uh, like light bright, just a wee drop. Just going to tidy the back up. So 
Skal det? Der var jo en commander nede der bor i det. Commander nede her. Skal lave der bor i det? Kom round. See what it looks like. That's fine. It just takes away. To me, it finishes it off. I like it. I like it like that. Now for the wing. A wee bit of flash. I'm going to put a wee bit of crystal flash. It's not a strand. Now, a couple of strands. Sorry. I tie these on. They're slightly longer than the body. On top. See how it's sitting. Fold it back. This will obviously stop it pulling out. Again, same length. Now you can leave these. If you don't want, if that's too much, what you can do is obviously cut them out. Or you've got, you could pick the best. So now for the wings, I picked Taylor on. I was just using this feather here. This is this told us a, a grizzle, but I've dyed it a wee bit grey in it. So got two feathers. You could put four on with this fly, but I'm just going to do four, eh, uh, two, because it's quite a pronounced. The wings are quite, you can just, they sit out, put it that way. Just tie it on the top. Now, there's another thing you could do is put a tiny bit of uh, CDC um, if you want, but I'm just going to leave it just with the, the hackles. Trim it the full length, just, just to tidy up this area. And then we're going to tie in some deer here. So how what I'm going to tie is a, a base of sedge hog. I'm going to put some legs on at this point. The pre -pro I've got a tie double knotted, file two fibres knotted. So we gotta, we do one either side. One. Get it to sit the way you want. You see, sometimes just swap it over, it'll sit better. That's fine. Same on the other side. The legs again are quite pronounced, so. It's okay. Double knot in it obviously gives you a bit thicker. It uh, gives a more impression of the, the legs, you can't see them. For the deer hair, I'm just going to use a roe deer. This one here, it's nice and grey, it's got the slate colour there. Nice colour tip, so it's a natural colour. Tie this one top. Like half the body length. Just hold that. You could put CDC in this as well, it's entirely up to yourself. You could just use CDC, but... Put on the rougher. Now, that's the wing on. Now to tidy that area up, some more of the same dubbing, the grey dubbing. Just going to put it to the side so I can see that I'm going to get right in there. Just watch the wing. Take your time when you're doing this. Some more of the, the deer here. Exactly the same again. This time I'm going to put the legs on after the wing, just so they can position them a bit better. The wing will help separate the legs for you. Just cut the ends nice and tight. Back to our legs. Then one on either side. Much the same length. A couple of turns to hold. Another thing you could do, you could you don't have to use pheasant, pre knotted pheasant tail legs, you can use you could use rubber legs if you want. As many people will do that. It may last a wee bit longer, but I do like the pheasant tail legs, it's very natural like. A bit more dubbing. Again, make sure you come in, tidy this area up. 
leave enough room for your last wing. Now what I may do is put some more legs in at this point. I like the legs at the front so, so I can see a wee bit better at this. I can tie in the legs just now. So we come in, make sure they're on the side. Legs are slightly shorter near the head, so just take your time when you're doing this. I'm just gonna fold these back. Trim away. Back to our deer hair. You could stack the deer hair as well, but I I'm just keeping it. It's a natural like it again, just sort of a nice taper. So I'm going to hold this, trim, come in, nice, nice, let's turn it first just to get it positioned and then we can tidy the head area up. See our feelers, see how they're sitting. You can always make sure they're going to sit right before we come up with the the dubbing. We can use the dubbing to separate them if we want it. There you go. Get back to our dubbing, we're nice and tight with it. Slide it up. Do a nice figure eight through it. Between the eyes. Don't catch these fine fiber fibers. Make sure to hold them back. Bring the thread to the front. Just lift the antenna. Keep the thread tight in your fingers. And then come in. Just lift them out of the way and then wet finish. Slide it up. And there we are. You can see now all I have to do is a wee tiny bit of varnish into the head and that's for stonefly or a dry fly finished. So we hear that. Just make sure the eye's clean. I'm just gonna use my dubbing needle to do that. Anyway, I hope you enjoyed that. It's a bit of fun. Something you can try. So you don't need all this flash. You can take some of it out. You can put the wings. Double up on the wings even if you want. Put a wee bit of CDC in there. So I hope you enjoyed that. And there we are. And that's a version of the Gadger. I guess thing you could do just to show you like on this one. You can darken it down, so you can just by, I'm using a permanent marker pen here, a black, just on the side. Don't think it makes much difference on the top, but just run it along just to show you what you can do. Yeah. Spend a bit more time than I have.